I'm Eric Stover, and I'm the faculty director of the Human Rights Center at the UC Berkeley School of Law. We're holding this exhibit to celebrate our 20th anniversary. Many of the photographers you'll see in the exhibit have worked directly with the center or are located here in the Bay Area. Some of them I have actually worked with in the field over the last 20 years, and I'll be describing what photography means to them, what are the the subjects they've selected, the importance of imagery in documenting human rights abuses. We're fortunate to have in the exhibit three photographs by Sebastiel Salgado, who is a world-renowned photographer, who actually began his professional career as an economist. He's from Brazil, and he originally worked for the World Bank, and on his travels in the World Bank, he began taking photographs, and then by, 19, by 1993, had dedicated his, his entire career to photography. In the exhibit, we have three of his photographs. One is taken in Vietnam. It depicts a village in Vietnam and, and fishermen and women who are uh, bringing in their boats after a, a long day of fishing. And this is, in many ways, their only subsistence in the village. The other two photographs are taken from his book, Uncertain Grace, one of Sebastian Salgado's finest photographs, we, th we believe, is of a confrontation of a worker in a mine, a gold mine, in, in a town called Cerro Palada in Brazil, and it was taken in 1986. It was at a time when there was a rush to go into extract gold from, from a number of uh, remote areas around Brazil, and literally thousands and thousands of workers came and uh, were subjected to uh, poor working conditions and, and very low pay. We're fortunate to have four photographs in the exhibit by Gilles Perez. Gilles was born in France and then later moved to the United States. He lives in New York City. He has covered conflicts all over the world. One of the photographs we have comes from the height of the war in 1993, and it's during the siege of Sarajevo, and it's a family being separated in the city, uh, about to leave on a bus. And we also have two photographs from the period that he and I were at the border in Kosovo during the incursion by Serb forces into Kosovo as they were expelling Kosovo Albanians into Albania. It's uh, of refugees crossing over into the Albanian side. And uh, many of the families could only gather their most basic things as they fled in, in front of the Serbian forces. There was a great deal of, of rape of women during that period. And if young men were captured, they were often executed. There's a fourth a photograph of Jules Perez, which he took during his time in Rwanda during the genocide in, in 1994 and it's taken in a refugee camp across the border in Tanzania. Many refugees fled into Tanzania for safety, and um, he was one of the first photographers to arrive just during and just and spent time after the, um, the genocide photographing what had happened in the refugee camps, and it was uh, one of the most harrowing trips that he ever did in his life. We have three of photographs by Susan Micellis. Um, Susan began her work in the 1970s in Latin America. She is known for using color photography for the first time in a war zone in Nicaragua. And uh, she later went on to do books on uh, human rights uh, abuses in El Salvador and later in Iraqi Kurdistan. Years ago, I went with her to Iraqi Kurdistan um, just after the first Gulf War in 1991. And I took a forensic team and Susan, and we traveled throughout the country um, carrying out exhumations of mass graves. Uh, these were from the Al Fall campaign that Saddam Hussein had led in the late 1980s. Susan took photographs from that period, and they later appeared on a cover story in the New York Times. And the photographs we have here are taken from a village in Karimi, which suffered a chemical weapons attack. 
a, another photograph, which is a trench grave of pilots who were shot down and later executed by Saddam Hussein's forces. Much of the evidence collected during the trip uh, with Susan Mysalis to Iraqi Tur Kurdistan was later presented in the trial of Saddam Hussein and another defendant, Chemical Ali, who was responsible for dropping chemical weapons on, in the Kurdish areas during the Anfal campaign. Uh, we're fortunate to have in the exhibit uh, four photographs by Ken Light, who lives here in Berkeley and teaches at the School of Journalism at UC Berkeley. And Ken has been covering a number of human rights issues here in the United States since the 1960s, from migrant workers, the civil rights movement, anti-Vietnam War movement, and the death penalty. His works are taken from two of his books. One is called Delta Time, which he worked on in the late 1980s, and depicts the plight of African-American workers in the South. Another photograph that are taken of migrant workers working throughout the West, and particularly in California. In the exhibit, we have seven photographs by Thomas Morley. Tom is a, uh, an English photographer. I first met him in 2005 when he was working in northern Uganda up near the Su Sudanese border. Tom and I went out to the Amada displaced persons camp near the town of Kitgum. And at that time, there were nearly 1.4 million people living in really squalid camps hiding away from the Lord's Resistance Army, which were carrying out raids on the camps and on villages at the time. Tom set up under a tree in the camp and invited people at the camp to come over to have their photographs taken. And, uh, he took about 60 or 70 photographs, and it was quite exceptional because so many people wanted to, to have their photographs taken. He then returned to bring the photographs back to people. We're lucky to have three of those portraits here. All three of them are of women who lost their children, uh, who were abducted by the Lord's Resistance Army and forced to be uh, soldiers. And they themselves, the women, lost their homes and have been living in these camps for some of them nearly two decades. And only recently have they been able to return to their homes. One last photograph we have by Thomas Morley is of a young boy with a toy gun around his neck. During the height of the violence in northern Uganda, really from 1985 to 2010, the Lord's Resistance Army abducted thousands of children and uh, forced young men to carry weapons. And some boys as young as 13 or 14 were put in charge of patrols and even forced to attack their own villages and young girls, some as young as 12, forced into forced marriages with rebel commanders and essentially had to live as sex slaves. In the exhibit, we have three photographs by Stephen Goldblatt. Stephen is a internationally recognized cinematographer. In 2007, Stephen traveled to Burma and traveled throughout uh, the highlands and captured the photographs that you see here in the exhibit. And when he returned, he dedicated the work to the Human Rights Center. And so what you see here in the exhibit are photographs of sort of ordinary life in Burma. For example, the one of the painting of the Buddha is um, a scene that you often see throughout Burma in the Wat as people come to take care of the statues of the Buddha, painting Buddha's lips the young man doing it, it's a privilege for him to be able to do that. So we also have a photograph of Inle Lake, which is the largest lake in Burma and is known for its various ethnic groups who live around the lake and live off of subsistence fishing on the lake. One of the photographs we have from Stephen Goldblatt is called Don Market, and it's a very common scene in Burma early in the morning People will set up stands and be serving breakfast for workers who are going into the fields. It's a sort of common, almost iconic image that you see across the country, uh, particularly in rural areas. 
In the exhibit, we have three photographs by Mimi Chakarova, who was born in Bulgaria well over 20 years ago, came to the United States and eventually to the Bay Area. She decided several years ago that to go back to Eastern Europe and to, to her home town in Bulgaria. And when she traveled there, she was shocked by the extent of human trafficking that was taking place because of the collapse of the communist system and leaving many young people out of work. And particularly young women were vulnerable and being trafficked into Europe, into the Middle East, to work as sex workers. So Mimi, in this series of photographs, are taken from her work documenting the plight of these, of these young women. And she has also produced and directed a documentary called The Price of Sex, which is a really companion documentary to the photographs. We have four photographs by Nick Dunlop, who is a, an Irish photographer who's lived for nearly 20 years in Bangkok and has worked throughout Southeast Asia, from Burma to Cambodia and, th and throughout Thailand. One of his photographs is taken from Cambodia, where he's documented the terrible problem left behind by anti-personnel mines uh, during the war with the Khmer Rouge which left tens of thousands of Cambodians maimed or killed as a result of the mines. He also has two photographs, or rather three photographs, from Burma. One is of Aung San Suu Kyi, which is really an uh, iconic photograph that is uh, shown widely, and one of the photographs most used in newspaper accounts about Aung San Suu Kyi. And two other photographs, one taken from Inle Lake, which is in the center of the country, of, of fishermen working on the lake, and of a border crossing uh, in Thailand, people coming across the border. We have three photographs by Stephen Ferry, who is a, an American photographer who began in the 1980s working in Latin America. He's dedicated the early years of his career looking at the plight of children and working in the mines in, in, in Bolivia. But we're fortunate to have three photographs from his book, I Am Rich Potosi, The Mountain That Eats Men. And the town of Potosi has had silver mines for hundreds of years, and often children are work in the mines. And so he set out to document the plight of children uh, working in the mines. And um, it depicts the miners going down to work. There's one photograph that is of a child going down a mine shaft. We have four photographs in the exhibit by Jean Marie Simon, who worked in Guatemala for nearly five years in the early 1980s during the presidency of Efron Rios Montt and the, the vicious civil war that took place there. Jean Marie traveled throughout the country, particularly in the province of Quiche, and photographed the violence that was taking place in indigenous communities there, and also stopping at times to take photographs of ordinary life, almost in some ways as a relief from what she was seeing daily, the killings that were going on throughout the mountains. So the three photographs we have here they come from her book, Eternal Spring. The photographs are depicting some Ishil schoolgirls, and this photograph was actually taken just after she had photographed several uh, bullet-ridden bodies um, in execution by the army of suspected guerrillas. One of the most striking photographs that we have in the exhibit by Jean Marie is a photograph entitled Dawn, and it's a photograph she took as she was trekking over the mountains to go to a, a village by the name of Nibach in order to document a massacre. At one point, she simply stopped and turned around and took a photograph as the sun was rising and the mist was rising on the hills surrounding the village.